OMG, After Buzzers, we have finally reached episode nine, and this is where everything blows up, literally and figuratively. It's episode nine of season three, The Libertines. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss any of our conversation. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz <laughs> Waha! I'm a little exhausted after this episode. <laughs> Man, that wore me out. It was, it was a journey, y'all. Yeah, that was emotional. Emotional roller yeah. coaster. There was sex. There was love. There was fire. There was a lot happened. Confusion. To say the least. Confusion. A lot of confusion. Clarity mm-hmm. for a lot. Mm-hmm. We went through a big journey within like 35, 40 minutes. Yeah. So we're going to take you through a journey in about 30 minutes as well. So thanks so much for joining us. I hope you haven't been I, I hope you have been enjoying, clearly I'm tired, um, all of season three so far. My name is Candace Cruz. I'm joined with the beautiful, wondrous, gorgeous lady of wrestling, Little Egypt. Hi, all. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so excited to get to talk like about this. To, like, I mean, we've been, yeah, okay, yeah, there's there's that sound. <laughs> I love that. Thanks, Ryan, in the booth. I appreciate it. It's nice to be recognized for that. Pretty- but yeah, it was a quite a whirlwind for all the characters involved. I mean, yeah, we've got Ruth auditioning for the big movie with Justine and telling Sam she loves him. Yeah, do you want to go right into that? Let's yes, do it. Yes, let's do it okay. because that was like what we've been wanting all I know, season. I know, and there are actually some fans out there that yeah. don't want to see this happen. Which why boggles Comment. my mind. And here's yeah. my thing: they did a fantastic job of. Basically setting the ball up on the tee for them yeah. in season two. Yeah. And then they're spoon feeding it to us for season three of like the tension. And I think both the actors do a fantastic job. Mark Marin and Allie, I mean, they literally set up the tension so palpable for all of us that how could you not want them together, people? Really, is it an age thing? Do you just think they don't look good together? What is the reason? Why do you not want to see these two? connect uh because if it is age then why is it that betty gilpin's character debbie, debbie yeah. can be with her guy and Tex. he's clearly 20 years older than she is well he has a 26 year old son yeah so i mean so yeah exactly and she's 32 yeah so let's do a little math there why yeah. is why is that relationship okay it's a fascinating conversation to be honest like age in general of mm-hmm. like how old is too old how big of an age gap can you have like but is there really a rule to it, though? It seems. It seems if if you're not on board, what's the real reason? Like that's why I would right. love for you guys to comment on the bottom of this because I want to know, and I'll be commenting yeah. back. So I'll be watching these threads, and I want to. I yeah. want to hear from you guys. And to be honest, like for me, it kind of was that at the beginning. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it. But then when I took a step back, I was like, that's my own issue mm-hmm. and my own judgment. But as characters and as actors, they are literally like setting it up that they they should be together. There yeah. is no reason why they shouldn't be. And right. I think she finally realizes that because she says she's in love with him. I know. It came out of nowhere. And it just kind of was like, ah, even Sam, he was like, like, the bartender shows up and he's like, get the fuck out of here. You leave. Go. <laughs> this is my moment. I've been yeah. wanting for forever. <laughs> Oh. You would go, go. Just go. <laughs> oh, my god! And then they start kissing in the bar, and it was just like, and he's right. He's like, we shouldn't be doing this. This is what my daughter would be doing. In he's like, let's movie. go yeah. home. Yeah, let's go home. I have a real house. We can do this somewhere else. <laughs> but it was so romantic. It oh was until gosh. it wasn't. Right. Now, why wasn't it? Let's talk about what yeah. happened with Ruth. She gets the call from Just Sam. Sam. Well, yeah, Sam yeah. saying, come down. We want you. We think we've got a part for you. And she thinks she's in. She's of like, course. you wouldn't have called me if I didn't have the part. But that wasn't the case. It, I think it's a hard way to go, especially, okay, I've lived in Los Angeles for a little while now. Mm-hmm. And I'm an actress and a host. And there's one thing in this business that you have to realize is that there is no guarantee no matter of who you know or if you think this role is perfect for you 
sometimes it's just bigger than the powers that be. Like, and I, to be honest, I totally respect Justine's call and judgment. Like, she gave Ruth the opportunity. Ruth came in, gave a fantastic read, but sometimes it's just not your part. Mm -hmm. And she didn't fit the part. And it kind of aggravated me, to be honest with you, where Ruth went so far over the edge. Yeah, she couldn't get over it. She couldn't get over it. And I think it kind of, she got very blindsided. And I think it was bigger than just the part she lost. I think it's her ego and her feeling like this is never going to happen for me. And she even said a couple episodes ago with Sheila and her acting and being like, I'm never going to be as good as she is. And she's just now starting. Like, yeah, that's got to do something to you. And this is the dream you've had your entire life. Yeah. And then, so here's Sam, right? They're waiting yeah. for the, the valet to show up and then, uh, and then go back to his house. And yet he's like, so this is what it's going to be about. Like you're, you're actually like it. We we can't move forward because yeah. you're stuck here. Like this is this is like the 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 line in the sand. Like that was that was on, was on an emotional a- scale. Like like if if we had to give someone an emotional age, that was probably Ruth at like sixteen. Like that's Absolutely. not a full grown woman's emotional response. Like you said, especially if she's been on a lot of additions. It's it funny. is, and it's just like I mean, and she even says. What were you going to do? You were going to tell me after you took me home and did stuff with me? He was like, this is why I'm telling you now. Right. Like, do not ever compare me to any of these other sleazeballs in L.A. that you've met. Like, I'm telling you now. Uh And this is so much bigger for us. You just told me you loved me. Right. Ugh. Yeah. Damn, we were so close. So close. (laughs) But I don't think it's over. No. I don't either. I don't think it's over. But I just, you know, would I was surprised that they couldn't resolve it pretty quickly after that. That there was no resolution in episode number nine. No, not at all. And I mean, Mm -hmm. she made a promise to Sheila that she was going to be back in time for this performance. And I understood at first because, of course, it's like, okay, you're going to go say you love someone. Like, sure, that makes sense. It's a valid excuse. But then you have this whole hissy fit. And you still don't make it back in time? Like, that's a little, I don't know. Selfish? Yes. That yeah. is the best word for it. Mm-hmm. Selfish, I yeah. think, is the, the best way of putting it. So, I mean, we'll see where that relationship goes. And you brought up the other relationship, obviously, is uh, Debbie and Tex. Yes. Um, and we'll see, I mean, There's where that that's s- going. Yeah, so they have this scene, right, where... She starts, they're talking about numbers, and he's like, well, how do you know the numbers about this offer that I'm getting ready to make? And she's like, Darn, you know, it's kind of a low offer. You undervalued it. And and he's like, how did you, what were you doing? How do you, yeah. how, what were you? so she's like, well, I was paying attention. He's like, your job's not to pay attention. Your job's to look good. And yeah. wow, that blindsided her. Like, they've been together six months, apparently, mm-hmm. right? So they've been in this relationship six months, and she realizes her worth to him is just a showpiece yeah um i think we also mm. just skipped ahead a little bit i think we went into episode 10 wasn't that number nine i think it was mm, no i thought 10 was just christmas right no okay all right but either way anyway you guys are binging it anyway we'll figure it out we'll we'll make amends (laughs) if needed but um she's also helping with the aids um, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. And Tex makes an appearance um, actually, and uh, at that party, and makes a huge donation in the mm-hmm. bucket. And it turns out that he lost a nephew in his twenties to AIDS, and so he does have like he's he's not as prude as we think he is, yeah. but he definitely is set in his ways for sure. I definitely think so. But I think um, you know I love that Debbie's finally finding that place as producer and I think she's really finding herself and like tapping into something bigger than what she thought it could be just by helping with the AIDS yeah, um, yeah. benefit and whatnot. Made her feel good. What do you think about Bobby? Okay. Yeah. Here's this new character introduced Bobby. He's Love a, Bobby. He's, uh, he's a he's a he's a diva. He's uh it's not a transvestite. When you when you You're a drag queen. Drag queen, yes. Mm-hmm. So he's a he's a professional drag queen, does an amazing job, amazing acting yes. for this guy. 
but he's taking a lot of time away from the rest of rest of the ensemble cast that we fell in love with. And so now we have a Bobby arc in addition to all these other arcs. Were you, what were you thinking about that? Do you think they needed it? I mean, I'll always take a Bobby. Not gonna lie. I mean, here's my thing. I, I get that we have the original ensemble cast, but... I think they've done such an amazing job. Remember, these are the creators of Orange is the New Black, which yeah. has been, you know, a huge show for ensembles. Mm-hmm. And I think they know how to do it so well mm-hmm. that they give all the credit where credit is due to all the characters. And I don't think that Bobby's overshadowing anybody by any means. And I think he's just enhancing the story and also giving another light. We're in Vegas. Like yeah. there, he he's he's also brought Sheila out of She Wolf. Like he has given some identity and a little bit of an identity crisis, which we obviously saw Bash have this episode as well. So I think that he's a pivotal character to all these other people that they're finally getting the mirror to themselves that they haven't seen because right. I think Bobby kind of fully lives in who he is. Right, right. And so I you're just, saying they need a Bobby in yeah. order to. Right, because the thing is, is like we really, as much as we could obviously stay within the bubble of just the glow women, like they are influenced by the the powers that be outside of just their bubble because they are living in this casino, and they're obviously involved with Sandy, Gina Davis's character, and who is also epic in this episode coming out at sixty three years old. 63 years young, looking like that, walking out in this gorgeous. Piece. They said it was a Bob Mackie. They said that on on the and if it was an original Bob oh. Mackie, it, and it looked like it probably weighed sixty pounds. Like At back, least back in the day when you're wearing real crystals and these head pieces literally were like twenty pounds. It oh, was at least. amazing. It's crazy. And there she was in all her glory. Oh, and she looked fabulous. Oh my god! Like, and she's tall, y'all. She's like wow. five nine, five ten. So yeah, it was amazing. But before we run out of time, because obviously there was a ton of story within yeah. this episode, I want to talk a little bit about Rhonda and Bash. How can we not? That is that That's is like huge. What we've been saying all season, people. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, so it starts where I mean, clearly Rhonda's having a moment. She's so confused. She's like, She's so I confused. don't know how to get this guy to love me. And I think the mom got in her head a little bit by saying, mm-hmm. keep him interested. Mm-hmm. And so, and I mean, in any marriage, you want to keep each other interested. It's not one-sided. But she feels very lost within her marriage and not fulfilled. And then she meets this biker and he's like showing off to her. And then Bash gets so riled up and there's this moment of like passion. She thinks this little plan of hers is going to work where she gets... Um, she convinces Jackie to I let her know. basically borrow her prostitute boyfriend, her right? Gigolo boyfriend. <laughs> her gigolo boyfriend. Gigolo. To, uh, <laughs> to to dress up as a plumber, come into their suite to te- to fix the hot Everything. tub, and uh, and then when Bash walks in, he just is like oblivious. He's like, "Hey, how you doing? You want a drink? Yeah, okay. I'm tired." He sits down, and then all of a sudden, he's like, "Oh." Like he's watching, he's watching this play out, and he's like, "Wait a minute, touch her, kiss her, you know." And then it gets erotic for Bash. Well, it actually gets her. <laughs> it gets very erotic for everybody watching. And it's getting erotic for me right let now. Let me tell you, it, it was just like, "Wow!" Then the next thing, they're in the bedroom. Uh, they're ki- everyone. It's a it's a threesome. Everyone's kissing and yeah. loving and touching. And yeah. even Rhonda's confused. Did but, you see yeah. Rhonda's face though? Yeah, she was. Oh like, my god. She, I, the look was kind of like, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, I, I think he likes things. He likes more than what I can offer him. Maybe you know, like I think maybe she she's has that realizing, of realization. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And again, yes. like, um, there's it's obviously the '80s, mm-hmm. and this is not something that's accepted, Mm-mm. um, as it is now. Yeah, and. Also, it's right in the middle of the AIDS epidemic. Yes, so scary. Very scary. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's not even just the stigma of being a homosexual. Um, it, it's not even that alone. It's 
like this risk of life or death because no one understands what's causing it. No one knows how to protect themselves from it. That's right. And it's literally a crisis. Mm -hmm. That's why they're having the fundraiser. So you can imagine her like mixed emotions of my husband is enjoying this with another man. Does that mean he's gay? Does that mean that like my marriage is over? What does that mean for me? Like, Am I going to get AIDS if my husband yeah. gets AIDS? Yeah. Which is a huge question, mm-hmm. too. So, yeah. and, then, and then the ugliness of the hate that comes with this when people aren't educated, right? When they don't, when there's fear involved, it's just, it still frustrates me. And it's, it'll have, it'll be around for eternity. It's just part yeah. of human nature. I mean, when, look at when what's been happening yeah, lately. Exactly. It's just ignorant people. Yeah. When you empower the ignorant, okay, so even in the 80s, the, the, they were being, the ignorant were being empowered by this fear of AIDS. And then at the end of this, because there was a fire, right. right? And so as everyone's rushing out, they see all this hate messages, oh, like God. it was graffitied on the, on, the, on the street, on the walls, and it was, it was uh, negative, bad words, this, that, the other thing. Thing, and that's when Artie sees it for the first time. Yeah. She sees the hate for the Arthie's first time. Artie's moment really hit home. Mm-hmm. And like even when Bobby is looking at the words with Debbie there, yeah. and he's like, well, we did it with a bang. They know we're here. Yeah. And here it is. I mean, just the look on their faces, like these weren't just words. Like I'm getting chills. These are like, it's a hate crime. It is. Absolutely. And like that moment between Yolanda and Arthi as well of looking at each other and Yolanda not necessarily saying, I told you so, but like, wake up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to protect us. Yeah. This is why I'm trying to keep things on the down low yeah. for this reason right here. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Arthi finally gets it. Yeah. I mean, she even has the, like, I mean, it's just fully there. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was a beautiful moment. And yeah. like, um, yeah, I'm excited to see where that goes because obviously we still have the finale coming up. Yes. Are you guys but, as excited as we are? I oh mean, this gosh. is it, episode 10 of season three. How are they going to tie this all together? I mean, I, I think it's going to be good. That's well, my prediction. Think obviously, we doing. haven't been doing predictions this entire episode, <laughs> this entire season. Um, but yeah, it was quite a whirlwind, to say the least, on this episode yeah. with everything. Yeah. Um, did we forget anybody? I think we I think we covered everybody. Okay. <laughs> Voices are coming out, y'all. If we didn't, we, we We've apologize. binged the entire season yeah. at this point. Yeah. So watch out. There's going to be more voices coming your way. <laughs> I'm super excited to get right into 10 because, like I said, this episode blew everything up. I want to see how they're going to put all the pieces back together in episode 10 and Mm. if they're going to leave us with any cliffhangers because we won't know when season four will be coming. If If it it will will. be coming. But also, guys, we do have an incredible interview with one of the stars, Shakira Barrera. She came in and sat with us and talked to us about her role as Yo-Yo on the show as well as her experience, the casting, taking her first bump. I mean, there were so many incredible moments. You won't want to miss that. So definitely go back to that episode and go find that interview and go watch it if you haven't already. I hope you loved it. She's going to be taking over the Instagram for Glow Netflix, and all of the characters are going to be taking over Glow Netflix um, Instagram handle. So go all week long. If you haven't already, go watch all the takeovers because you're going to get behind-the-scenes photos, videos, q Q&As. Every day is going to be different depending on each actress. So you won't want to miss any of that, especially if you're a die hard glow fan like us. So stop what you're doing right now. Go watch the season finale. Go watch episode 10. Come back over to After Buzz TV. Watch our recap of episode 10. You won't want to miss our conversations. As always, comment below. Let us know what your thoughts are about this episode, what your predictions are, and everything in between. Again, my name is Canis Cruz. You can find me on all my social media at Canis R. Cruz. And where can they find you, Little Egypt? Okay, Instagram, Twitter, at Little Egypt, and Facebook, Glow Little Egypt, if you want to see some of the archive footage. I mean, we're talking about a glow rabbit hole that started in 2008. 
So if you love Glow, if you love these cast members, it was inspired by a real, real story, which is also a documentary on Netflix called Glow, the story of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. You got to check that out too. And thank you guys very much. I love being here. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.